Hello, good morning. Welcome to another time of KC Video Devotional for 29th of August. And the topic we are looking at this morning is how to make your fiancé or wife happy and how to make her love you forever. All right, we're going to get to this right away. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18 says, Let that fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Mr. John is heavily frustrated. His wife is never happy. He has exhausted all the wisdom and skills in his arsenal, yet no hope. All his romantic antics have been displayed, all to no avail. He feels so incapable. What else can I do to make this woman happy? On the other hand, George is in courtship with Lucy and is as frustrated as well. Lucy is always vacillating between two extreme emotions. And poor George is at a loss on how to make her happy. If I can be experiencing this before marriage, what will happen after? George reasoned. Pleasing a woman, really, is not so much about doing so many things, but doing what appeals to your spouse specifically. Why do you need to ensure she's happy anyway? You need each other's agreement in order to have spiritual potency. You need each other's help to forge ahead as a couple. When she's happy, the home will be great too. You see, the moment you prefer to hang out with the boys rather than your wife, and you deliberately go home late, you are no longer in good terms with your wife, and the devil can take advantage of that to bring all kinds of attacks, especially adultery. So, as a single in courtship or as a wife, how do you make her happy? Number one, listen to what she's really saying. Don't watch television or read newspapers while she's talking to you. For your wife, attention means a lot to her. Women are not logical. Rather, they are emotional. So, a discourse with you might seem illogical, but if you want to make your wife happy and your own great, you must make time to listen to her. This is very important. In some countries, there are people who work as listeners, and all they do is listen to women talk and they are paid on hourly basis. This is to let you know how important it is. If you allow the driver or cook to become the listener, a love affair might erupt over time. Spend time with her a lot. As singles, it's a brand you keep in touch daily, especially if you are not in the same place. If this all-important communication is not there, trust me, there will be issues coming up from time to time. Number two, learn to apologize to her quickly. You might be the head of the house, but don't hesitate to apologize when you have wronged her. You really don't want to be the head over troubles and quarrels. Strife will starve for your spiritual voice and render your prayer useless. As singles, stop being egocentric and learn the art of apologizing quickly both ways. Don't let your culture be filled with memories of whipping, feeling down and out. It is not a good seed into your marriage. Number three, don't ignore her. Let her feel appreciated that she's contributing to the progress of the family. Take her along in your decisions and outings. Pay attention to her words and ideas. Don't make her feel she has nothing to offer. When you don't let her help through her opinions, she's easily frustrated because her ministry is to be a helpmate. When you do these seemingly little things, they will make a great difference in your life. She might not be logical and factual when she's advising you, but she could be accurate because of her natural intuition. She can know a bad friend from afar. She can sense a bad business deal from just listening to you share with her. As singles, take decisions together and don't let her feel you are the superman that can do all things. She will get used to that style and the help you all to get from her when you are down will not be there. Don't muffle her. Number four, don't criticize her. Correct in love. Don't treat her like a doormat. Give her the respect she deserves. She will in turn love you dearly and your home will be peaceful. As singles, treat her with respect. Don't ask for sex, for that will be asking her to compromise a virtue, and that is not respect. Protect her, and she will love you dearly. Treat her with dignity, and you will have a heart. Number five, never act as though you were superior and she inferior. She is not subservient, only submissive. 
God wants wives to be at their husband's sides, not at their feet. That was why God made Eve with bones from Adam's side, not his feet. Number six, never show preference to others at the expense of your wife. Believe in her, affirm her, encourage her, and she will in turn do the same to your children. Women are multipliers. Give her spam and she gives you a baby. Give her ingredients and she gives you a sumptuous meal. In the same way, give her stress and she will give you frustration, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Number seven, single ladies, if you are in a relationship and you are not being treated well, don't hesitate to back out. It's your life and it's your decision. Don't stay in relationship because of self-pity. If you are being verbally abused or physically abused, don't ever think it will change after marriage. It's really going to get worse. A word is enough for the wise. Don't walk blindly into marriage when you can see all the wrong symptoms. Don't go into a marriage with a man who tells you he will quit dating other girlfriends after marriage. If you can have them now, he will keep having them. Have a good self-esteem and trust God to give you the best. Don't marry a man or woman who doesn't love and value God. That will be a costly mistake. It is better to end such relationships. A broken heart is, is still better than a broken life. Silah. For you, reveling in sin because of ungodly affairs, I pray that God will give you the energy to end that relationship. For those whose relationship are of God, I pray for you this day that God will give you that wisdom to make that relationship work. In that marriage, may God grant you the wisdom you need to run a successful home, a loving family, and a strive-free milieu in Jesus' mighty name. Meditation for the day. Proverbs 5, 18, let that fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Prayer for the day. Number one, I disannul and disarm the spirit of pride from manifesting in my life in the name of Jesus. Number two, I exercise authority over every influence of Delilah in my life. I severe every emotional bonds of ties between me and any Delilah in Jesus' name, I break free from all wrong mindset about marriage in the name of Jesus. Number three, I receive grace to love my spouse dearly and be faithful to him or her. Confession for the day. I love my partner dearly. I will honor God in my relationship. I receive divine wisdom to understand my partner and to love him or her more. Sin will not have dominion over me. My relationship will translate into marriage. I will not make mistakes. In the name of Jesus. I will not miss it maritally. I treat my partner with respect. I will not violate his or her body. I will wait till marriage before consummating the relationship. I see my partner as a team player. I apologize and I forgive quickly where necessary. Action plan for the day. Decide to do it God's way. Chronological Bible reading for today. Jeremiah 42 to 44. Ezekiel 33, 21 to 33. This is the end of the devotional this morning. Thank you for joining. God bless you. You might want to partner with us. Please kindly use the URL on the screen at kissesandhugs.com slash give. God bless you.